Hi, it's Dr. Steve from Ms. Recorder University. Let's review, summarize, and wrap up by looking at some of the highlights of our course uh, ECE 387, Integrating the Arts. We started our semester by looking at art, and then the second half of the semester, we moved into music. In the art section, we pointed out that visual arts are basic to all humanity. They exist in all cultures, and they really influence and are part of our everyday lives. Beyond expressiveness, we indicated that art is can be used as a tool for thinking and for inquiry. Art contributes to a child's development in a number of ways. Rather than having children create crafts in the classroom, we focused on the process-focused art experiences where students utilize their creativity and they don't have to follow step-by-step -step instructions to make something look like the teacher's sample. From research, we indicated that there are three major stages of art in early childhood. The first stage is the scribble stage, and this takes place before age four. The pre-schematic stage takes place roughly between ages four and seven, during which time children draw tadpole people and notice how their uh, things that they draw that are more important or powerful to them are drawn larger. In the third and final stage, we call it the schematic stage, and it takes place approximately ages seven through nine. Uh, children are starting to use shapes more, uh, and they may also draw something we call x-ray people, in which you can see a body also under clothes or a, a profile with a side view of a person's face with two eyes, because now they're 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 drawing from what they understand uh, more so than than what they see. You can use art experiences with the youngest of children. From research, we found that one of the major art goals for children three and under is to get them to explore different media and different tools used to create art. This is a primary goal when working with the youngest of children. As soon as children show interest, they're ready to start creating art. This slide shows an example of how we could introduce three-year-olds to painting. We would start small and start slow and then start adding elements little by little. When working with art, we said there were five elements of art that we can introduce to our children. They include line, shape, and form, and also color and texture. These are all things that we can explore with our children as they are creating artwork. In addition to the elements of art, we also introduced five principles of art, and these include balance and rhythm, and also harmony, movement, and repetition. When we walk around the room as children are creating artwork, we're able to also discuss these principles of art with them and help them to recognize them. As we said with music, it's very important to expose children to all types of fine art and artwork. When introducing children to fine art, we said there were four steps involved in the introduction process. Number one, talk about the artwork. Ask the students to tell you what they see. Then continue by sharing some information about the artwork and also about the artist, him or herself. And then also relate, as we did with music, relate the artwork to the content, to the activity that you're doing in class. We then experimented with some online and some techn technologically based art activities. The first one was some augmented reality coloring and we used an app called Quiver in which we brought drawings and coloring to life in 3D. We explored some electronic art tools and resources. Two of the online drawing tools we looked at were UI Draw Painter and Sketchpad. And then we took a look at and explored two augmented reality art apps. 
we looked at Play-Doh Touch, in which children can create animals and different creatures using Play-Doh, take a picture of them, and render them in 3D augmented reality and bring those creatures to life. And then we looked at Quiver AR, and Quiver allows children to color some already existing, already created pictures on many different topics, and, and then with an app and a mobile device, bring them to life as 3D uh, uh, artifacts. So a, a whole different way to help students connect with art. We held an online discussion based on several articles that we read, and we compared recess and physical education. Remember that we said that play is a valuable use of time, and physical ed is important, but also recess is very significant. For the exam, make sure you can tell us why. Toward the end of the semester, we also considered dramatic play, and we compared how younger children play versus older children. We then created some puppets, and we explored how puppets can support children's development. Several of those ways are listed on this slide. Some additional really important benefits of puppets in the classroom are listed on this slide. We then considered the topic of nutrition, and we even created centers in which nutrition and health topics were one part. Eating a good diet, we said, was a very important learning for our young children. This information from myplate.gov uh, is helpful because it talks about what we should focus on. Uh, a, children, a children's diet should involve focus on fruits, have varied vegetables, uh, make at least half of the grains whole grain, uh, definitely go lean with proteins, and also get calcium-rich foods, very important for children's development. We also considered different health and safety topics, and one of those was smoking and also vaping. And I wanted to introduce all of you to some of the latest research, which is very, very new and very limited at this time, but vaping is not considered safe, safer than smoking. In fact, it's just as dangerous. We then considered physical development of three, four, and five-year-olds. On a standardized test, PDE, will not ask definitions or things of that nature, and neither will we on the final exam. But PDE might ask something like, um, here is a scenario, and, and they're trying to get at what's appropriate. Do you have knowledge of what's appropriate for a three, four, or five-year-old child? If PDE were to ask, they were to give you a scenario that involved, for example, cutting on the line with scissors, you would know that four-year-olds are much better at that than three-year-olds. And likewise with our five-year-olds. Before wrapping up the art section of our course, we considered integrating the arts into the classroom, the importance of and how to do it even even more fully. And we found that uh, there are good reasons for doing this. Uh, art makes content more accessible, more joyful for students. Students can express themselves and, and express personal connections to the content much better. And they can understand uh, and also through art express abstract concepts. Uh, they can uh, participate in higher level thinking and also participate in more community. In this direction, we found that there were really four different levels or approaches to incorporate art into the classroom. Uh, while many uh, teachers and also this course took more of the first approach, which is the subservient approach, where the main goal is to teach other subjects and then the arts help in that process, um, teachers could actually advance further and finally get to the co-equal or cognitive approach where teaching of the arts is equally important as the teaching of other subjects and they happen side by side. 
In the second half of our course, we focused on music. So for our final exam, make sure that you can list some of the many benefits of incorporating music into your classroom. Remember that according to research, uh, infants experiment with sounds uh, as they're learning language. So music and language are very much related. Also remember that music is natural to young children and music and movement are intertwined in that when a child hears music, he or she wants to move in some way in response, whether dancing or tapping their feet or something of that nature. Remember that when you teach a song to a class of young children, you perform the echo sing method of teaching. When working with children with special needs, many songs lend themselves to images and that uh, using the images uh, while the students are singing is a strong way to create a sensory experience for these children. You will recall, because we looked at it many times, that music can be used in the classroom in, on three different levels. Uh, each is a positive way to utilize music and the primary way that teachers use it is the, the middle way, which is enhancing educational content. Piggyback songs involve superimposing new words uh, dealing with the content that you're teaching and superimpose them over the top of existing songs. That's really powerful because it's easy for the children to learn the songs because it reduces their cognitive load. They already know the song. We looked at how uh, teachers can select songs and music carefully, and by doing so, they can really positively impact uh, the children, the way they, they learn and their, and their state of readiness for learning. And it can also impact classroom management. Remember that alpha music is the type of music that encourages the brain to produce alpha waves, which are relaxed, but yet heightened awareness so it's very positive for learning and also for positive classroom management. Teachers can use content songs to introduce a concept, to introduce elements of content, to serve as a memory aid as they learn content, and also at the end to review or reinforce learning. We defined music, and then we also considered expressiveness and expression which is the way that you get your creativity and your feelings out through music. We emphasized that young children should be exposed to many different musical styles. When working with our youngest children, uh, it is logical to introduce percussion instruments first, things like drums, triangles, uh, tambourines, and things of this nature. In addition to percussion instruments, if on the exam I were to ask which instrument is a member of the, a wind instrument class or a brass instrument, you should be able to name at least one. And the same with string instruments. In class, we highlighted research that indicates that parental involvement really has a lot of positive benefits to students. This slide lists several ways that we can involve families uh, in our classroom. There are many benefits of incorporating movement into the classroom. Several are listed here. As we looked at the benefits of movement in the classroom, we also considered the connection between movement and learning. We found that movement is very important to learning because the part of the brain, which is the cerebellum, uh, is the same part of the brain that processes learning. So movement and learning are connected through the cerebellum portion of the brain. And connected with this is the inner ear, the semicircular canals, because they gather uh, feedback for movement. We found that the inner ear and the cerebellum work together because it's critical to our attention system, because this area regulates our incoming sensory data, helps us to maintain our, our physical balance. 
so we can turn through there we can turn thoughts into action so we can coordinate our movement and that's why there's so much value in the playground activities that s stimulate our inner ear motion things like swinging rolling jumping it, it really connects movement and learning so if we were to do some activities with our students that involve movement will more positively affect their learning. Recall that there are two categories of movement. Non-locomotor means standing in one position to move, while locomotor means moving from one place to another. There are many benefits of incorporating dance into the curriculum. Several are listed here. Another great way to use dance in the curriculum is very similar to content songs. You can utilize content dance in which you can introduce concepts or reinforce them. We can also utilize music with games and games have a lot of positives in the classroom. Several other benefits of games with music are listed here. Then before we participated in demonstration lessons in which we integrated art and music and movement and potentially puppetry and drama, uh, we finished the semester by having an experience of documenting and by creating an observational record of an individual child. And we said, how would you do that? How would you make it look scientific? Wow, that was a lot of material. But you know this stuff. You'll do great in this final exam. Plan for about 45 minutes for the exam. There will be two sections. One will be like a PECT test in which it will be um, multiple choice, A, B, C, D. And then we'll also have a second section in which they will be short answers. If you have any questions about the exam in advance, let me know. But you know this stuff and uh, you're just about finished with the semester, then you can relax and have a great Christmas break. Take care, and we'll see you at the final.